Fred Kaplan, Dark Territory, The Secret History of Cyber War. Embark on a journey through the secret world of cyber war in Dark Territory, The Secret History of Cyber War, by Fred Kaplan. This book summary delves into the complex and evolving world of cyber warfare, highlighting its history, tactics, and consequences. It explores how governments worldwide, particularly the United States, have tried to adapt to the new normal of technology-based attacks and espionage. From the ancient Roman signal interception methods to the modern-day cyber attacks on nation's critical infrastructures, the book provides fascinating insights into how cyber warfare has changed the face of global conflicts, intelligence gathering, and even diplomacy. Cyber Fighting and Mass Surveillance Armies have been intercepting each other's communications for centuries, and since the 19th century, cryptographers have been used to encode messages. However, with the advent of cyber warfare, attackers can not only retrieve signals but also change or corrupt them to disorient their foes. Today, networks can be monitored to collect vast amounts of data on individuals worldwide, allowing attackers to wreak havoc at a low cost. The book delves into the evolution of cyber warfare, its impact on modern warfare, and the implications of mass surveillance for privacy and security. U.S. Vulnerability to Cyber Attacks The book highlights the U.S.'s initial ignorance of the potential of cyber warfare and the ramifications of such a dismissal. Operation Desert Storm marked the beginning of counter-command control warfare with the U.S. penetrating Saddam Hussein's command control network. The U.S. monitored Iraq's usage of a backup system using microwaves after bombing Saddam's fiber-optic cable. However, top officers dismissed the significance of cyber warfare, resulting in more collateral casualties. President Clinton established a committee to analyze the vulnerability of critical national infrastructure, where cybersecurity took up more than half of the report. The Marsh Commission report warned of a potential for enemies to use computers for disruption and theft, but almost no one acted on it. In 1997, an NSA team hacked the Department of Defense during a war game, using only commercially available tools to penetrate the entire defense establishment's network within four days, illustrating the U.S.'s vulnerability to cyber attacks. The book emphasizes the need for a better understanding of cyber warfare and its potential effects on national security and infrastructure. The Russian Hacker in 1998, the Air Force detected hackers' activity in its computer network. After investigation, they found out that bored teenagers were behind the intrusions at 12 bases, while a skilled hacker ran purposeful searches on the military systems. The Marsh Report prompted officials to add detection systems to military networks. Finally, months of intelligence efforts identified the Russian hacker. Diplomatic efforts in Russia resulted in the cessation of the hacking activities. Clark's Battle for Cybersecurity In 1997, Richard Allen Clark was tasked with cybersecurity, and he realized that U.S. firms knew little about their network security, which could be exploited by countries. He met with hackers who briefed the president, resulting in the Critical Infrastructure Protection Directive and Clark's appointment as counterterrorism head. However, Private industry opposed the government's authority, delaying the implementation of the National Plan for Information Systems Protection. Yet, Clark persisted, rewriting the plan to protect American networks. This book chronicles Clark's battle to protect the country from cyber attacks. The Power of Information Warfare In the book section, an account is given of the Joint Staff Secret Organization, J. 39, that applied cyber warfare techniques in the field during the NATO mission in Serbia. J-39 blocked Serbia's TV stations used to organize protests and disrupted their ground radar during bombing raids. The organization also interrupted Milosevic's propaganda and threatened his allies with power loss. The book discusses how military action and information warfare combined prevailed against the Serbs. It showcases the significance of information as a tool in modern-day warfare, capable of achieving unprecedented military success through the disruption of vital communication channels and propaganda machines. The Birth of Cyber Operations 
A new era of cyber warfare began in 1998 when the NSA started using hacking techniques and secret technology to exploit vulnerabilities for intelligence purposes. This practice was called Computer Network Exploitation, CNE, and it allowed the NSA to detect unpatched weaknesses in software programs, known as zero-day vulnerabilities, which gave hackers easy access. The NSA's Office of Tailored Access Operations, TAO, was at the forefront of this new development, which caused the agency to change its policies, practices, and computer system after facing legal trouble due to faulty communication and bad interagency relationships. Bush's Impact on Cybersecurity President George W. Bush's move towards missile defense led to a de-emphasis on intelligence gathering and terrorist threats, resulting in a lack of focus on cybersecurity. His main advisor for counterterrorism, Clark, resigned in June 2001. In September of the same year, just weeks before the end of his term, Clark wrote an executive order on cybersecurity, incorporating new points, but also reusing sections from the Marsh Report. This action marked a departure from the Clinton administration's focus on cyber activities and signaled the beginning of a new era for cybersecurity in the U.S. Revolutionizing Intelligence Operations When General John Abizade took charge of the U.S. Central Command, he noticed that information gathered during the Iraq invasion was not coordinated. He appointed General Keith Alexander as head of intelligence to address the issue. During the Iraq insurgency, General Peter Shoemaker advocated for Alexander to become director of the NSA. Alexander revolutionized the NSA by replacing the old system with nine smaller ones and improving data processing. The NSA used malware to shut down Iraqi computers and sent false messages to insurgents, successfully luring them into traps. The Growing Threat of Cyber Attacks The book highlights the increasing threat of cyber attacks on the United States. In 2007, the Department of Energy demonstrated that computer tools can be used to inflict physical damage when 21 lines of malicious code were entered into a 27-ton power generator, causing it to shake itself dead in less than three minutes. Mike McConnell, head of national intelligence, proposed the Comprehensive National Cybersecurity Initiative, CNCI, which sought to unify all governmental servers into a single network with limited internet points of entry. However, budget clashes and interdepartmental conflicts hindered the plan's implementation. The book also details the first known hack of a Department of Defense, DoD, computer in October 2008, highlighting the need for a unified U.S. Cyber Command established by executive order in June 2009. The book stresses the importance of protecting the civilian side of government from cyber attacks and the grave consequences they could have on the nation. U.S. Dominance in Digital Communication A report mapping the world's network bandwidth revealed that 80% of digital communication passes through the U.S., making foreign communication vulnerable to NSA detection. McConnell convinced the U.S. government to improve FISA and expand the NSA's legal actions through the Protect America Act. Electronic data gathering was redefined to no longer be considered surveillance. Stuxnet and Cyber Warfare in the lead-up to President Obama's inauguration, President Bush informs him about Operation Olympic Games, which deployed a superworm called Flame to damage Iran's nuclear program via computer networks. The malware destroyed almost a quarter of Iran's centrifuges, setting their nuclear program back for a few years. Iran retaliated by funding cyber war units, leading to the emergence of the Shimun virus which wiped around 30,000 hard drives at Saudi Aramco. These events forced officials to ponder over the impact of cyber attacks on modern warfare, with Obama releasing the U.S. cyber operations policy to regulate American diplomacy and military planning. The Growing Threat of Cyber Warfare The U.S.-China cybersecurity relationship became tense in March 2013 when the Obama administration listed cybersecurity as a concern. Although the U.S. accused China of hacking their computer networks, China denied this and maintained that they had departments dedicated to information confrontation. The two countries held a cyber war summit on June 7, but the next day, newspapers ran stories on U.S. and British surveillance of private citizens, which weakened Obama's bargaining position. 
In response, he appointed a committee to investigate the NSA, and they found no illegal activity but made 46 recommendations. In 2014, Iranian hackers attacked Las Vegas Sands in retaliation for Sheldon Adelson's anti-Iran comments. North Korea also hacked Sony when it planned a movie satirizing its dictator. The U.S. continues to grapple with how to respond to cyber attacks, which can cause significant harm without resorting to physical destruction. In Dark Territory, Fred Kaplan unravels the story of cyber warfare, revealing its rich history and its persistent influence on our modern digital world. The book highlights the challenges governments face in understanding and safeguarding against cyber attacks, while tracing the evolution of cyber warfare techniques and tools. As technology continues to progress, it is evident that cyber warfare is not only here to stay but will play an increasingly significant role in our lives. Kaplan's enthralling account serves as a cautionary tale for both governments and individuals, urging us to stay vigilant in navigating the dark territory of cyber war.